Hello internet friends, it's Tim Schrock again. I want to show you this tutorial on building this newel post for the stair system that I'm modeling. Let's get started. So as I mentioned, I want to build this newel post and put it in my library for future use. I don't have anything quite like this, um, this post in, in the library, so I'm going to build it from scratch. First of all, I'll notice a couple of things. It is, uh, the cap is, is a different color than the post, so that we will want to keep uh, account of. Second is, this is just the newel post at the bottom tread. And in my case right now, for my model, I have an I have intermediate posts as well. This is too long for the for the uh, handrail, and I'm not going to have that size post in my in the middle here because this is just hanging out uh, in the middle of. Of the air, so to speak. So I'm not going to put that newel post as a post in the stair system. I'll drop it as a model or as an object uh, on top of the stairs instead. So let's get started with this. First of all, I'm going to close a couple of windows. And this way I can start with a brand new model, empty model. Let's draw, let's go to my working plan set and I'm gonna draw some boxes. To start off with, I'm gonna say that main portion of the, of the um, of this is five and a half. We'll just say that's five and a half. I could be uh, that could be seven and a quarter. Let's go seven and a quarter. Undo that. What did I type? There we go. And We'll give that a height of, so if that's 36, that's got to be, that's got to be what, uh, 42. I'm going to turn this into a polyline solid. And it doesn't matter layers at this point. Then I'm going to draw another line around this, another polyline, and we're going to convert that into a molding polyline. And for this, I'm going to say the height is zero. That's going to be the base of my, uh, I'm going to set that as the base of my molding polyline and start adding some moldings around this. For my case, I'm going to use this square, what I've called 1 by 8 trim, and that's going to be, let's say, that's a 1 by 12. So let's call that 11 and a quarter. And it is not inside the polyline, it's outside the polyline. There's no offsets. Uh, for this one, and it is definitely not to the top. Again, this would be measured from the zero point, which is zero to my to my chief architect world, if you will. We're going to add another one, and actually, that one is this one by twelve is uh, 
a horizontal offset of a one by so three quarter inch. And for this one, I'm going to do a one by another one by eight trim. Now, one by eight trim is just just a square, a rectangle, right now with three quarter wide by seven and a quarter tall. So when that plugs in, that's what it is here. But uh, I can change that height of it. So let's say that's three. This is going to be a vertical offset of 11 and a quarter. It is not inside, but this 11 and a quarter does have a horizontal offset of three quarters. Let's say this is um, three and a half, and so we're going to go minus 0.5 here. So 10 and 3 quarters to the bottom. So this is at 0. That's the um, 1 by 12 is at 0. And then 10 and 3 quarters up is the 1 by 4. And that'll have a 3 inch reveal above that. The 1 by 12 has a 3 quarter inch horizontal offset for uh, to get outside of this one. And then lastly, we have another small piece right there. And I'm gonna say that's just three quarter by three quarter. So we're gonna add another new one. Again, that is not extruded inside the polyline. We're gonna make that three quarter, and this will be a vertical offset of 41 to the top. So let's take a section of this. There we've got the seven and a quarter inch main uh, slab or main post, if you will. You've got that molding, that three, quarter, three inch reveal here, and then one by 12 here at the base. There's the three quarter by three quarter molding at the top. And lastly, we'll put a cap. I'm just gonna use this cap right here in the library. And let's give it the proper dimensions. Uh, floor to bottom will be absolute 41. And then I'm going to say that is uh, seven and a quarter plus one and a half. So I can do um, retain the aspect ratio and I can do the math right here. 7.25, oops, 0.25 plus 1.5. So there's a three quarters on all sides. And we're just going to center that right here. Let's make sure that's what it looks like. Let's do another, because that's got to be a little bit bigger than the top um, molding there. So let's do another plus 1.5. Oops, cancel that. Retain the aspect ratio plus 1.5. Whoops, got to recenter it. Not sure why it's showing. There we go. Now, when creating a uh, symbol, what one needs to think about is the color scheme that we're um, sending, that we're using. Uh, if I were to make all of the objects on this uh, symbol w the same color, I would only get to control one color. It doesn't matter what the color name is or what the color type or material type. If it's a different material or color, you, you get to control those objects. So if I, the cap right now is a porcelain cap. The rest of these are bone color. So everything that's bone will get controlled 
with one feature, the cap will get controlled with a second material feature, if you will, or property would probably be the better term. So the cap has one property, the rest of this has a second property. If I want to create, if I want to control the properties of each layer of this, I would have to make each layer have its own material. And we could do that. As long as it's not, none of these are the same material, that's, it doesn't matter. So let's do that with that control. I'm going to go into my materials and it doesn't matter again. I'm just going to do black for the base. We'll do charcoal for this trim. Coal for the um, post. And there's the concrete for the, um, or contract for the, the top trim there. And then the cap is the porcelain. Let's do a shift K. That gets me my camera view. And I'm going to tools, symbol, convert to symbol. This is actually going to be millwork. And we're going to call this um, shaker newel post. And we're going to add it to the library and show advanced options. Shaker newel post, fantastic. First of all, I'm going to go to materials. So each color has been given, each um, material that we had in here has been given that name, the, the name of the color material. And by default, that's the name, it's, that's the color or texture it's going to be. But I don't want this. So color black is the base trim. Highlight trim. I'm just clicking once to select and then click again to rename it. Post. Uh, cap trim. Cap. And then I can select what the default color is for each of these. Now I have control of each one, but I can make by default, I can make all of them the same material. So I'm going to select the material and go to my plan material. And we're just going to say color. We're going to say color bone for each of them. Again, this is just my default. So when I drop it in from my library, that's what it's going to be uh, using. This is a newel post for type. Materials is set up and now sizing is important. Um, so if I want this to be stretched, if I change the height of this, the proportion of the cap and the base trims will stretch proportionately as I raise, as I um, change the height of it. But if I want these to stay the same and just that center post to be the part that stretches, which you won't see any difference because it's just a square post with straight lines, I can do that by a uniform stretch zone between height planes one and two. So height planes one and two right now you can see that that gray line around the base here that's because height planes one and two are at both at zero height we're going to and you'll notice zero for y and zero for x zero for x is down the center but zero for y is on the back side of it so we're not going to do those uniform stretch planes on that, just the height. Um, so let's say that's that's 11 and a quarter, that's 3, so 14 and a quarter. Uh, so 15, height 15. And let's say that's at height um, 30. 
we can go to what uh, 36 we can go to 40 I think yeah so 40 is just below the that cap right there or that trim piece right there and 15 so that's our stretch zone The last piece here is to offset our origin. The depth of this is uh, 10 and a quarter. So our Y origin is gonna be minus 10.25 divided by two. Minus, let's make sure it is the minus. No, it is not the minus. the regular five. So now our origin is down the center of this cap because we set the um, we set the offset origin that way and there is our post. Let's click OK. There's our post in the library. I'm going to drop that right here. And you'll notice as I click, it's the, the center of my cursor is in the center of the post. I'll drop that there like that. And let's look at our camera view. And there's our post. Now I can go back to my model Drop this post right here. I want that right like that. I'm going to take a section of this. And you'll see the stretch planes working here. So as I raise that up, My base trim and my cap remained the way it's supposed to do, uh, supposed to work. And I'm going to open that and make it an, an even, say, 54 inches. And then I'm going to use the handrail trim uh, material and paint that onto the cap. I could paint that handrail trim onto the onto this trim beneath. I could make that the post and highlight. I could do all sorts of things because I've customized each layer of this uh, library object as its own unique uh, material property. Lastly, I want this to be on visible on top of, so to speak, the stairs. So I'm going to open up the stairs and notice that the stair drawing group is default uh, the stair drawing group is group number 22 so let's do that with the let's look at the layer tab of the millwork and we'll have to move that up to 22 and i'm going to copy and mirror that about my stairs the center of my stairs so there's another one. So interestingly, the um, Maybe I don't want the sizing, maybe I don't want the offset origin situation going on. So I'm going to open, I'm going to delete this one. And I'm going to click once on this one and click the edit with the chair that opens the symbol. And I'm going to change that to zero. Let's see what that does. 
Yeah, that's the case. Okay, so I'm going to right click on my library object and open the symbol and change this one too so that doesn't do that in the future for me. Now just for continuity, I'm going to grab this color off of this post and paint each of these objects the same color scheme that we're using in this model. I could have used the object layer, the object um, painter mode, material painter object mode versus component mode, and that would have done just that whole thing in one click. Back to plan view, select this, copy mirror about the center of the stairs, go back to the camera view. And there. I could even, let's open up the stairs and go to Newell's Ballasters, rail passes over the Newell. Mm, that's not going to work. It's got to break it. Well, I'll talk with the designer and see what we uh, decide on this middle middle piece. But anyway, there's your um, custom object for the newel posts. Um, you certainly could open the stairs and make the newel posts out of the library. Uh, shaker newel post, you know, give it the height, give it the size, etc. that you need to do. All right, I hope this has been helpful. Um, have a great week. Thanks for watching.